Welcome to Waterloo Warbirds, and congratulations on selecting the Canada Air CT-133 Silver Star Mako for your ride today. We are very confident that you will enjoy your flight and leave with memories that will last a lifetime. But prior to flying in the T-Bird today, we have a passenger briefing video for you to watch that will cover Transport Canada mandatory briefing items, as well as information that will familiarize you with being a passenger in the T-Bird and safety-related subjects. Enjoy the video and please ask your passenger coordinator or any Waterloo Warbird crew member any questions you may have at any time. Our goal is to provide you with the best and safest flying experience possible. Donning the Parachute During your flight today, you will be wearing a seat pack parachute. The parachute is similar to a backpack, but also has a seat cushion you will be sitting on while in the aircraft. When donning the parachute, you will put it on by putting one arm through at a time. Next, connect the chest strap by clipping each end of the strap together. You will then reach down between your legs and pull the leg straps to your hips where you will secure them on either leg. After all straps are connected, ensure that they are pulled tight. At the conclusion of this video, you will be redirected to view a video from Strong Parachutes, the manufacturer of the parachute used in our T-Bird, that will reinforce the procedures for the wearing and use of the parachute. Once you have test fitted the parachute outside the aircraft and adjusted the straps to comfortably fit you, you will remove it and the parachute will be placed inside the aircraft. You will put it on when you have entered the rear cockpit of the aircraft. Entry and exit of the cockpit. To enter the rear cockpit, you will use the ladder located on the right side of the aircraft. The ladder reaches up approximately two meters, so ensure that you have a firm grip on the rungs and firm footing while you climb. When you get to the top of the ladder, reach in with your left foot and step on the seat. Then, leaning low and forwards, reach in and hold the center canopy column. Bring your right foot into the cockpit and step on the floor. Step down with your left foot onto the floor and then sit in the seat. To exit the aircraft, you will first disengage the seatbelt harness and then the parachute. Stand up and grasp the center canopy column with your left hand. Step up onto the seat with your left foot, lean forward and grasp the top of the ladder with your right hand. Next, step over the side of the cockpit with your right foot onto a ladder rung. Lift your left foot over the cockpit side onto the ladder and then descend. Once comfortably seated, and after you have once again put on the parachute and tightened the chest and leg straps, you will secure yourself into your seat by use of the five-point harness. The seat bottom control toggle is located on the lower right side of the cockpit and this will be used to raise or lower your seat as needed. Next, bring the right and left lap belts to your belly area. On the right lap belt you will find an arming key attached by a string. Keep this available as it will be needed to secure the clasp. Now place the two shoulder straps over your shoulders to the front of your body. Raise your collar on your flight suit over your shoulder straps as this will keep the shoulder straps from chafing your neck in flight. Now put the loop at the bottom of the left shoulder strap through the left lap buckle tongue. Next, take the negative G strap loop and secure it onto the left lap buckle tongue. Then, take the right shoulder belt and secure it onto the left lap buckle tongue. And finally, the arming key is placed onto the left lap buckle tongue with its two metal pins on the bottom. Grasp the right lap buckle and push the left lap buckle tongue into the right buckle and ensure it clicks. You are now buckled into the aircraft and the harness should look like this. To complete strapping into the aircraft, pull your waist and shoulder straps until they are tight. Be sure to pull both sides at the same time so that the harness remains centered. 
The lock and unlock lever for the harness is located at the bottom of the left armrest. Move the lever forward to lock the harness and back to unlock. The harness is on an inertia reel like a car seat belt. It may need some slack before it releases. The harness should be in a locked position for most of your flight unless you need to reach something in the cockpit or your pilot directs you to unlock the harness. In order to release the harness, use your right hand to pull the right side of the clasp, the part with a divot in the handle, to the right. Next, with your left hand, pull the bar that was next to the clasp to the left. With both sides of the clasp pulled, the buckle will fall apart. Pull the shoulder straps and the negative G-strap off the tongue of the left lap belt and you are now free of the seat belt. Safety in the cockpit. An important area of concern is what to do with your hands, feet, and arms while in the cockpit. We ask that you do not touch any controls in the aircraft unless directed to do so by the pilot. This means that for most of your flight, keep your hands on your legs, but feel free to throw in a thumbs up or a wave. Remember, this is your flight, so have some fun with it. Make sure to allow for the full movement of the control column of the aircraft. Though it is rare for the stick to be fully deflected, it is important to give the control column as much room as possible to move. This is balanced with a need to keep your left knee clear of the throttle as well, and make sure that you do not hold onto the throttle at any point during your flight. Also, keep your feet back from the rudder pedals in the footwells. While on the ground, keep your arms inside the rails at the side of the cockpit as the canopy is in danger of crushing your arms when it closes. During your flight, you will be wearing a helmet. The helmet and microphone will allow you to communicate with your pilot during your flight. To speak to your pilot, all you need to do is talk normally into the microphone. It is important for you to know that you will also hear air traffic control communication. Do not speak to your pilot when you hear this. It may be necessary for you to wait a few seconds for air traffic communication to conclude before talking. We encourage you to speak to your pilot and share any concerns or observations that you may have during your flight. The left side panel of the cockpit has nothing on it that the passenger should ever need to operate or touch. On the left side of the cockpit are the main fuel cutoff switch, throttle, speed brakes, flaps, aileron boost, high pressure fuel cock, and the landing gear handle. The three main no-touch items all have white handles. These are the aileron boost handle, which assists the pilot in controlling the roll of the aircraft, the high pressure fuel cock, which controls the fuel flow to the engine, and finally the landing gear handle, which controls the raising and lowering of the undercarriage of the aircraft. The main panel of our T-33 aircraft has been significantly upgraded since the 1950s when it was used to train thousands of Royal Canadian Air Force pilots during the Cold War period. Our T-Bird recent upgrade includes a combination of classic instruments and current glass panels. The main panel includes many of the basics familiar to pilots today, along with a few unique items. On the lower left side is a location of the oxygen system, which is controlled by two toggle switches. Beneath that is the red tip tank emergency jettison, which is a no-touch item. Beside that is the flap indicator, as well as three small windows which display the current position for the aircraft's landing gear. The large rectangle on the upper panel is the enunciator panel. This panel is made up of a number of buttons, which will display indication of aircraft functions or warnings. On the Garmin display, you will see indications of airspeed, altitude, heading, and orientation of the aircraft. At the very right of the panel is the engine instrumentation. From the top of the stack of the engine gauge is the RPM gauge, exhaust gas temperature or EGT gauge, fuel flow, and fuel quantity gauges. The RPM gauge lets us know the speed at which the engine is spinning. The EGT gauge lets us know the temperature in the tailpipe of the aircraft, which is very important during startup or any rapid throttle movement. The fuel flow gauge lets us know the current rate that we are burning up fuel during our flight, and the fuel quantity gauge lets us know the remaining fuel aboard the aircraft. One of the more interesting gauges is an accelerometer that lets you know how many G's you have pulled during your flight. It is located on the Garmin screen. On the lower right cockpit panel is the radio volume unit, 
which your passenger coordinator will use to set the volume in your helmet mic system. Below that is the map bag where your air sickness bag and other items will be stored. Beside the map case is the emergency hydraulic handle, which would be used to lower the landing gear in an emergency. This also is a no-touch item. Above and at the back of the panel are a number of switches and buttons. The small round buttons in line at the bottom are all breakers. In the event you do see one pop up, please let the pilot know right away. Above the breakers are guarded switches for the generator, aircraft starter, and battery switch. These are all no-touch items. Finally, above them is a round button that is labeled canopy open. This is an item that will be further briefed as part of your emergency egress training. In the event of smoke in a cockpit, it is imperative that you act quickly to find and establish your oxygen supply as soon as possible. When you strap into the cockpit, the last step is to add your oxygen hose. The hose is located on the left bottom edge of the seat. It is stowed by being clipped onto the seat. To unclip, just pull it upwards and guide the brown strap up the hose as well. If you detect smoke in the cockpit, let the pilot know immediately over the intercom. The pilot will direct you to unbuckle the oxygen hose. Take the hose and place it in your mouth. Reach over to the bottom of the left front panel where the oxygen system is located. Select the first white switch up to 100% oxygen and select the second switch up to emergency. Breathe in through your mouth and out through your nose. To stop smoke from coming up through the vents, you will need to close the floor vents. The vents are located on either side of the lowest part of the front panel. They are labeled with white tabs. Using your feet, push the tabs up to close the floor vents. In the event of an emergency and the pilot has directed you to leave the aircraft, it is important that you move quickly, calmly, and with confidence. Remember that calm people are the ones that will walk away from an emergency. One of your first steps in leaving the aircraft would be to unbuckle your safety harness. To release the harness, use your right hand to pull the right side of the clasp, the part with a divot in the handle, to the right. Next with your left hand, pull the bar that was next to the clasp to the left. With both sides of the clasp pulled, the buckle will fall apart. Pull those shoulder straps and a negative G-strap off the tongue of the left lap belt and you are now free of the seat belt. At all times, the pilot will continue to direct you as to what they want you to do next during an emergency. The pilot will say over the intercom, bail out, bail out, bail out. Once you have unstrapped, the pilot will then jettison the canopy. In the event the pilot has become incapacitated due to something like smoke in a cockpit or has become unconscious, we want you to know how to jettison the aircraft's canopy. On the right side of the seat at the bottom, just above the floor of the aircraft, is a yellow and black handle. This handle jettisons a canopy using an explosive charge. Before pushing the yellow and black handle forward, ensure that you are sitting in a correct position to jettison the canopy. Your body should be straight and not bent over sideways looking at the handle. Sit with your body straight in the seat, left arm across your chest, right hand on the handle, and head in line with your body. Only then push your right hand forward, pushing the handle. The canopy will then leave the aircraft. You as the rear seater will exit the aircraft to the right with your arms crossed and your legs tucked into your body. Once clear of the aircraft, move your right hand onto the D-ring of the parachute harness and pull it across your body. When you land, bend your legs to soften the landing. If you are on the ground after a forced landing or something unexpected has happened during a landing, the pilot will say, get out, get out, get out. Remain calm. Although something has happened to the aircraft, your best chance of safely leaving the aircraft is to do so in a calm and controlled manner. You first need to unbuckle and unstrap from your safety harness. Once unbuckled, the pilot will open a canopy. In the event the pilot has become incapacitated due to something like smoke in a cockpit or has become unconscious, you will need to know how to open the canopy. You will first need to unlock the canopy. This is done by locating the canopy handle on the back part of the left side canopy rail. The handle is stored in this location. Remove the handle by lifting under it with force. Once the handle is free, make sure you match the square attachment slot to the square pin on the right, just under the red canopy railing. There is a small notch in the square that you must match. The handle mounted in its locked configuration is pulled back or facing the back of the cockpit. Once attached, 
simply push the handle forward to unlock the canopy. Option 1, Canopy Open Button. Now that the canopy is unlocked, you have three options to open the canopy. The first is the standard canopy open button, which operates the electrical motor that lifts the canopy. The button is located on the right side of the cockpit on the right panel towards the back and the top. The silver button must be pushed and held to lift the canopy into the open position. If for some reason the canopy open button does not work, like the canopy becoming bent or the electronics of the aircraft becoming disabled, we will move to the next option, which is jettisoning the canopy. In essence, this is what has already been briefed in the bailout procedure. To review though, on the right side of the seat at the bottom just above the floor of the aircraft is a yellow and black handle. This handle jettisons a canopy using an explosive charge. Before pushing the yellow and black handle forward, ensure that you are sitting in the correct position to jettison the canopy. Your body should be straight and not bend over sideways looking at the handle. Sit with your body straight in the seat, left arm across your chest, right hand on the handle, and head in line with your body. Only then, push your right handle forward, pushing the handle. The canopy will then leave the aircraft, and you, as the rear seater, will exit the aircraft to the right. If the two previous options do not result in a canopy opening or leaving the aircraft, we have a last option that takes a bit of manual effort, but is proven to work. The canopy knife is a tool specifically designed to break open the canopy in an aircraft like the T-33. The knife is located on the top side of the right canopy rail towards the front and over top the right side of the instrument panel. To access the knife, pull the ring at the back of the knife. This unlocks the knife, which can then be pulled free. You will notice the blade is a curved and straight side. Hold the handle of the knife in your hand with the curved blade facing you and your other hand cupped underneath to provide additional force. Now trace or score a squared outline on a canopy the approximate width of your shoulders. Once traced, punch with all your strength using the tip of the knife to make holes in each corner of the square. Finally, continue to punch holes all around the square until a canopy has come apart. Now that one of the options has opened the canopy of the aircraft, you will need to exit the cockpit quickly. Making sure that you are clear of your harness straps, lift yourself out of your seat and out onto the wing of the aircraft. Next, slide down the wing and onto the ground clear of the aircraft. Immediately put as much distance as possible between you and the aircraft. We recommend at least 30 meters. There is a fire extinguisher located in the front seat of the cockpit. There is a first aid kit located in the nose of the aircraft. There are air sickness bags located in the rack to the front right of your seat. Should you feel unwell, please tell your pilot at your earliest opportunity and retrieve a bag to be prepared for sickness if it happens. Flying the T-Bird. During your flight, the pilot may offer for you to fly the plane. This will be discussed prior to your flight. However, it is important that when this occurs, proper communication of exchange of control takes place. To take control of the aircraft, you must have your right hand on a control column situated between your legs in front of you. This is done by the pilot saying, you have control. You as the passenger will then say, I have control. You are now flying the aircraft. There are numerous buttons on a control column. Do not touch any of these buttons during your time controlling the aircraft. The T-33 only needs very little inputs, so make sure that you are gentle on the controls. When the pilot takes control back, he will say, I have control, and you will then say, you have control. The pilot is now flying the aircraft. You should now release the control call. We hope you have enjoyed the T-33 passenger briefing video. Please remember to ask your passenger coordinator any questions you have. We are here to assist you in every step of the way to ensure you have an amazing flying experience. Please stand by for a video from Strong Parachutes, reinforcing the shoot training that you have already had in this video. After we finish that, let's go fly! When you pull the ripcord, a spring-loaded pilot chute, which is really just a small circular starter parachute, is launched into the air. The flow of air through it allows it to drag and act like an anchor to start the deployment of the reserve parachute. The parachute is pulled out from the top in one long sleeve shape. 
and the lines are extracted from the container. Then the parachute opens and you transition to sitting upright underneath the canopy. On the two black V-shaped risers near your head are toggles, which are used for steering. As far as using the, the parachute and using the systems uh, accompanied with the parachute, very simple. How to open your parachute. The ripcord handle is located near the chest strap on the wearer's left front of the harness. The key is to look, reach, pull. Look at the ripcord handle rather than fumble or tug on the harness fitting. Beneath the fabric cover, the ripcord handle is held in place by a pocket. Look at it first because it may have been dislodged by your exit. Reach over and grab it with both hands or typically with your right hand and left thumb and pull. Yank it hard. There is no time to be gentle. Actually pulling, which uses the muscles in your forearms, is not as effective as pushing, which takes advantage of your upper arm strength. Uh, the D-ring, I made sure that I pulled. I, I, you know, when I practiced pulling the chute, when I would, uh, before I got in the airplane, I always practiced pushing it at full arm's length. I never, I don't know where the chute disengaged. I don't know, and I let go of the D-ring, so I didn't, I didn't hold on to it. If it doesn't come free on the first pull, check it to make sure it is the handle in your hand, not some other piece of hardware. Back the handle up to the housing to create slack in the cable, then punch it out again. The entire cable assembly should come completely out of the housing. To reduce the pull force, push the handle in the direction that the protective ripcord housing points, rather than straight out from your chest. By having both hands together on the handle, you also reduce the chance of the canopy or lines entangling with an extended limb. Keep your feet together for the same reason. Body position is secondary to pulling. Remember to look, reach, pull. The release of the chute was immediate, and from the time that I released it to the time it opened, obviously I wasn't counting and keeping track, but I was surprised at how quickly it worked. Um, it, it was very quick and very comforting. You could see the stuff unfurling over your head, and, and, and almost instantly it makes a nice big pop, and uh, just instantly slows your descent. It's very comfortable. Did you know? Typically, it takes about two to three seconds from ripcord pull to fully inflated canopy, traveling a vertical distance of 150 to 300 feet.